yesterday I did an effort up uh, Mon Cham, which this is the segment here, uh, 5%, 16.9 kilometers. So I thought I'd go into power, uh, sort of like, so it's a very rolling climb, thought I'd analyze some power. So anyway, we have the KOM, which is poor. I had an all right effort, didn't really eat enough. Um, I was 10th here, so not, not incredible, but not, not dreadful either. So I thought I'd analyze like, and Tori also did an effort. So I thought I'd analyze like Tori's power, my power, Paul. So like Tori started riding like with power a year ago. I started riding with power about mm, maybe two and a half years ago. And Paul's been riding with power for ages. And just interesting seeing what happens when you ride with power like longer. So anyway, we'll go up onto Tori's effort here. So you can see like this bit, there's a lot of speed changes. Um, so speed is the top one, then power, then cadence. Uh, and you can see, so the first bit here, Tori is struggling to like hold consistent power. Then on this part, when it's sort of, uh, the speed is more consistent, she holds good power. So these dropouts aren't her, it's just the um, the power meter, like no, the Garmin watch. And then you can see here again, when the speed increases on the flatter parts, she's not holding power as well, but then it gets steep again, she holds power well. And then at the end, there's always, this part here is always, um, it's a little flat and like, you're never gonna hold great power. Anyway, we'll then go on to my power. Um, so we'll just do a quick comparison so you can see roughly what the deal is. So you can see the beginning part here, I managed to hold power a little bit more smoothly than Tori, uh, just because I'm used to trying to hold wattage and just like try and keep around that 290. There's still dropouts when the speed goes really high, so here I think I was probably just on the top tube or something, because uh, at like 59k an hour, it's just better to get on the top tube. Um, save the, save the, like, because you're not pedaling and you're probably not losing any speed, if anything, gaining a bit of speed. Um, and then you can see again here um, on this part where it climbs up, power is pretty consistent and smooth. A little drop out here, but again, trying to keep my power as smooth as possible. And then at the end, there's always this little part here. We then go over to Paul, who sort of has a couple of spikes here, but you can see the beginning part is so smooth. Like if you compare his to mine, you get, I've got these little dropouts here, but he doesn't, he just keeps it very, very smooth on this part here. Um, then even on this part here where you're going 60 Ks now, he still keeps pedaling. Um, and then you can see here again, it's very smooth. I'd say overall, like he seems a little choppy, but sometimes it's just how the power records or whatever. Um, but it's just interesting seeing what what happens when you ride with power more. And I think it's the ability to hold very close like to the power you want to. So when you scroll in, you can see here, it's like very, very close to being the power you want. So if I, you scroll in on my one, actually, <laughs> this is sort of the pipelines. You can see again, it's like, it's pretty smooth, but it's almost the same to be honest. Um, and then you also zoom in on Tori's and hers is also very smooth as well. So on the steep parts, it's, it doesn't seem as, as much of sort of a difference, but on this part here, you can see like there's just going very up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, for the same part on mine, there's some up and down, but it's generally a little smoother. Um, and then on Paul's, it's very, very smooth indeed. Uh, and it's just like, when you first ride with power, it's very difficult to get the concept that you're not pedaling smoothly. Because I remember when I got a power meter, my numbers were jumping from like 150 to 240 to like 170 to 220. It was just absolute chaos. The numbers were just everywhere. But the more you ride with power, the more you just learn how to like keep the effort consistent. And I'm like, on a set, say 6% climb, which just, or 5% climb, which just that the whole time, it's easy, you just click the gear, pedal the same cadence, so you're pretty much gonna hold the same power. But it's when there's these real big speed uh, changes and that's where you need to be really consistent like trying to pedal at like 300 watts look Paul's doing 320 watts here at 63 k's an hour on a downhill and that's where it's like maybe it was isn't the best to pedal there but like it's impressive that he manages to keep the power down even when it's actually quite um like it's downhill for, for me I'm find it a lot harder um and also the other thing I guess is learning how to put power on the flats and over the top of climbs and that's definitely what um takes a lot of practice because at the beginning you, you think oh, it's just the same holding power on the flat and the climbs and everything, but it's like, even the difference between like climbing at 10K an hour and 20K an hour, like they definitely feel quite different holding power. Um, and it definitely seems not the same pedaling, um, especially when you look at the power meter. But anyway, I hope this is interesting. Like if you just got a power meter, I'd say, focus on just trying to like at first just ride and see what numbers you get and then just try and focus on like holding numbers and just like getting used to riding a bit more smoothly so then when you're doing intervals your numbers aren't like spiking everywhere because it's really horrible power to see when the numbers are just going absolutely crazy at the end um it's nicer when they're really smooth uh together but anyway cheers for watching hope you did enjoy this little analysis of power if you want me to analyze any other clients or analyze um any sort of power data 
then let me know because I'm always up for analyzing some power data. There's not too much power coming from the Tour de France at this moment in time uh, because no one in the front group really has power data, which is a bit annoying. Uh, but maybe if any becomes available, I will definitely do some analysis. So anyway, cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.